March 17th. Uh, I'm Christian. I'm front-end developer working here at Locustic, and I will briefly, briefly introduce you to, you know, uh, to those of you who are here for the first time. I will explain you what Tino is. Uh, Tino is meetup uh, created by Locustic company for the sake of uh, connecting people, strengthening local community, and sharing knowledge, of course. Uh, but nothing of this could be possible without our uh, sponsors, partners. Uh, first, our beer partner uh, is Barba, it's uh, Fresh Tap Beer. Uh, the beer is located there on the kitchen counter. You can grab as many as you want. Uh, the next one is our accommodation partner, Marvi. Uh, they are hosting our beer speakers. Uh, then, Beaver and Cakes, our dessert partner. Uh, feel free to take a uh, slice afterwards because summer is over. Or is it? Doesn't matter. Uh, pizza partner, Bocamora. Uh, the pizzas are coming shortly after the event ends, so try not to storm out because you will miss the best pizza in town. Uh, as always, the meetup is being broadcasted by our streaming partner, uh, Splitex City. If you miss something or you want a recap, you can find stream on YouTube. Uh, our drive partner Uber, uh, do not drink and drive, do not even walk, be driven. Use that code Dino Meetup 10 to get 25% of discount on your next Uber drive. Uh, and our last partner for now is Netocracia. They share this event and help us with marketing campaign. Uh, and now, uh, the concept of augmented reality is known to most of us. Uh, by using Snapchat filters, Instagram filters, or even by playing games like Pokemon Go. Uh, Maximiliano will tell us more about it. He's a web developer, uh, writer, uh, and the founder of IT Master Professional Training. Uh, he has worked with uh, many companies such as like uh, Apple, Google, uh, LinkedIn, Yahoo, uh, Intel, good memory. <laughs> <laughs> Intel, PayPal, Tesco, uh, uh, eBay. Do you want me to use the HDMI or the Apple TV or? Uh, I can put it. it okay. Yeah. yeah.
That's the idea. So yeah, questions, yes, please. So later we are meet up, so the idea is to just make conversation, but sometimes um, you ask something that I have on a slide like uh, in, in 10 minutes, so that's why I'm saying, okay, let's, let me go through the slides and then we can, we can talk, okay? So um, we're going to talk about the new realities, specifically for me to come out AR, uh, how the experience looks like from a different, uh, different devices or different uh, ways of doing AR today. Um, then we will talk about AR on the web, what you can do on the web with augmented reality and some ideas for the future, or possible ideas for the future, okay? So, um, the web has always been in a box, okay? So it started like this, in, in text, so DOS, um, then moved into Windows, better Windows, mobile, I have talked about doing mobile websites in WML. Do you know what that is? WML? Websites? Have you ever heard about websites? Well, I have, yeah. I have talked with that in that was 2001, probably. Uh, then, of course, the iPhone, Okay, but now it's time to like free the web from that box. Um, there are a couple of realities. Uh, I will we will talk here about one. Okay, that will let us do that. Uh, that's basically we have like two. We can discuss more later. Augmented reality and virtual reality, where you can see the the difference here in terms of it is the real world, so uh, universe generated and computer generated. Um, we have augmented reality in the middle and we have virtual reality there. We can discuss uh, if this reality is real, really the reality or we are in the matrix, something like that. Like, so um, we are going to cover here AR, okay, not VR. VR is basically when you have fully, uh, you, are, you are fully immersed in a virtual environment and with AR, we are trying to see information or see objects or interact with 3D content or 2D content uh, within our reality. So we are mixing both. That's the whole idea. So, um, okay, I'm not working anymore. There we go. So, what I'm, why, have you heard about XR? So because we have, it seems like, what's wrong with this? Okay, I don't know what, it works fine. Um, in the meantime, I, I already charged it, but let's say, that's in case, in one minute, it charged for, I think it's uh, 50 minutes. So let's take, put it here just in case it didn't charge, like uh, this. Let's move here. So have you heard about XR? So AR, augmented reality. VR, virtual reality. There is an MR, mixed reality. Do you know the difference between mixed reality and augmented reality? So it's not so clear. We will, we will mention which differences are. Uh, mixed reality is uh, a name for one kind of AR. But now, we are talking about XR, <coughs> which um, some people said that X is for extended, some people think that X is for mixed. That's not the case. X is just a variable for anything. So uh, means any kind of reality. Okay, so in this today, that can be VR, AR, or even mixed reality. Um, there are APIs, tools, frameworks, that now are targeting XR. So when you see XR, it means both realities, virtual reality and augmented reality. Okay, so API frameworks and tools that will let you work with, with, with all of them. So, um, so any new reality, that's the idea. So, um, this is um, from one of the organizations right now working on standards on the web. This is the diagram talking about the, the things that you can do, okay, on VR, on AR, that's part of XR and non-XR. Non-XR means shut my computer. Okay, I, I, I'm not getting into a, a, a real world or something like that. We will talk about these words that you have there uh, in a minute. Okay, but um, the, the first uh, thing that I want to mention here is magic window. Have you ever heard about that term, magic window? No? But probably you have seen it, I guess. Magic window is when you are using your phone to access, for example, a virtual uh, environment. Or you're looking in Facebook, a 360 picture, like when you're doing this, and you, I mean, the picture is moving, now you have 3D images as well. So that's a magic window. So the idea is that your phone is like a portal with a magic window to that virtual unit. You don't have a headset, you don't have anything, uh, you don't have any special hardware, 
you are using your phone as a magic window to that VR world or AR world. Okay, so that's magic window. That's probably today. There are, um, if you cover the whole spectrum of AR and VR, you have probably all the phones compatible with this. But for the most advanced uh, AR that is available today on the web, that we will cover in a minute, we have around 800 million devices, uh, phones, that are compatible with uh, this technology. So, of course, that's growing with time. In probably five years, all the devices will be compatible with, with everything. Let's see if there is a difference now. Huh? Maybe it didn't charge. So, we're going to talk about AR here, okay, augmented reality. So, let's start talking about the different types of AR that we have. So, we have the old one, that's location based. That's the older AR uh, solution available out there. I will show you a picture, I have a picture later of this. But that's basically when you um, take your phone and you do like this and you say, okay, there you have a church. That church is that name. If you do that, so in that place, okay, you have uh, the, no, the split port. And that information is it's not really using your camera or any AI to detect what is there. It's using your geolocation and it's using the magnetometer or the compass to just trying to understand where you're looking at. Okay, that's the, the basic AR uh, option available. Then we have recognition based. That's when you have, for example, I'm not sure if it happened here in, uh, in your country, but sometimes you have um, things like Coca-Cola uh, bottle with a, with a code here. So there were countries with that. And with an app, you can point to the code and some, something happens in your phone. Okay, uh, getting out of the bottle. So that's basically recognition based. So it's recognizing, a, it can be a barcode, it can be a special image or something like that. Uh, we can do a, we can try to do a live demo later if you want with, with some banknotes. For example, from, there are some banknotes from Russia. I think there is a new one from India as well. And there is an app also for the one dollar, US dollar banknote. That if you point with your phone with the right app to the banknote, uh, some things appear on top of the banknote explaining uh, some historical um, <coughs> like event that happened. Okay, uh, on that the image that you have on that banknote. So those are that's AR based on recognition. I have uh, some videos of that anyway. And probably the the one that it's getting more attention today is this kind of AR. It's called projection projection based. AR or mixed reality. The idea is not just to show information on top of the reality, it's to uh, play with the, the space that you have around. Like I can put a, like a cat here okay, in the floor and the cat knows, let's say knows, that there is a chair there. So I know that uh, it cannot go over here because there is something here, so it's not the floor. So that space recognition and the ability to put objects on that space, okay, that's this kind of AR or mixed reality. Also, there is another one called superimposition-based AR. That, that's more science fiction for now. That's um, basically the idea that you put a headset, you need a headset for this, and then, for example, uh, when, I'm, when I'm looking at, at um, that chair, so instead of looking at him, now I'm seeing an alien. So it's basically changing his face with an alien. So it's replacing okay, one real object with a different object. Okay, so that's the idea. For now, it's still uh, in every stage, it's that one. Or if I can have this one, uh, but when I have my glasses, this is a gun, not really in a game, in an AR game, not really a, a remote control. So it's basically replacing on the fly, detecting the object, replacing that object with a different one. So, um, these are the types. Now let's talk about some uh, different kind of solutions that are available. We have Zero F, you say what is that? that? These are AR with no freedom. Freedom to what? Freedom to rotate, freedom to move. So, in this case, it's something that you see, but if you do this or that or that, you will see the same. Okay? So it's not really, you don't have freedom to adapt that content in terms of movement. Okay, so now we'll do with you and understand why I'm saying this. Then we have three DOF, 
<coughs> which means three degrees of freedom. That's what you have with your phone. So when you are looking at a Facebook panorama or a Facebook 360 picture or video, you can do this and see that okay, X, Y, and T, three axes, that's why three degrees, but you cannot walk. But you can walk, but nothing will happen there. So you're not moving in that, in that uh, virtual world. Or if you're doing that, it's not changing. Okay, and then we have AR with six degrees of freedom. That means that you can walk around that virtual environment or that augmented environment. Okay? <coughs> so now I'm talking about solutions that we have today, so you can understand what kind of AR you can do. We have monos monoscopic AR solutions. That means, for example, the Google Glass. Do you remember the Google Glass? Yeah, yeah anyone? So it's still here and there. I think I. Still, yeah, I think I remember. So this is the Google Glass, I think. So uh, this is monoscopic, so I don't have two, lens, two screens. It's not a screen, it's a projector. It's only on one eye. So um, it has zero F. So first, this, has, this is like around five years old, so it's old. Okay? So um, this, this guy is zero F, which means uh, if I do this or that, it's not actually changing what I'm seeing. Okay, so it's not really for creating immersive augmented reality, but it's augmented reality, but a different one. Okay, this is probably the, the most basic one. So, uh, talking about uh, the glass, just a parenthesis here. So, I've been doing uh, talks on here, a couple of years ago, on developing <coughs> Google Glass. I created some apps for some companies that they're still using this. The Google Glass is not there, it's currently available. Uh, for purchase, for, for, for the enterprise world, not for users, not for end users, but for uh, companies, industries, that they need to work with hands, so they, they need hand-free solutions and software for, for those users, and they are using Google Lab today. So I was uh, delivering a talk in Riga, okay, Latvia, and some photographer was there taking a picture okay, of me doing that which uh, leads to the press talking about my talk in Riga, which is fine, okay, that was fine. The problem is that that photographer also sold my picture, okay, with the glass everywhere. Um, I found around 3,000 newspapers with my picture there, of course, I didn't give any permission to do that. Um, and Reuters was uh, selling that uh, picture, of, but there are several pictures, several versions of that picture. I was, I was delivering the talk, so I wasn't really uh, posing for that picture, but anyway, some things like it seems like the FBI, the FBI interrogated <laughs> me because of that. Uh, also, uh, it seems like uh, if I look at you, okay. With, uh, by the way, this is this class, okay, that one in there. So it's a famous class. So just looking at you, I can know your personal details. Um, also, um, and there are like the glass code. Okay. The funny thing, I, 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 so if you pay attention here, at least the article was saying that I'm actually a nice guy, not the guy. <laughs> uh, because they were using just my picture everywhere. Because uh, the reason for that is that Google didn't, wasn't, uh, didn't release an official picture at that time, so there were no pictures of the Google official picture or high resolution picture for the media. So they were, buying, they were buying my picture, and finally this one. <laughs> Don't ask me why, okay? but I'm there, okay? um, and you can you can see that it has nothing to do with the art. Okay, I was just well, just a developer wearing Google Glass before it comes. Anyway, so um, the glass is kind of back. I, I I mentioned already that the Google Glass is still there for industries, but there are other companies trying to do Google Glass for the masses, so for us. For every user that doesn't look like a, like a, I don't know, a robot or a hybrid uh, human being, okay? Because this is kind of weird to walk on the street with this. Uh, so they're creating new glasses. La Forge is one company. I think I have a video of La Forge in a minute. So um, there is also a basic glass. So that has 3D orientation and recognition of your space. It's for the same as the Google Glass, but it doesn't look weird. It looks like a normal glass. 
So um, then we have, of course, uh, with the magic window, also known as camera path through, uh, any phone that you have. So any phone that you have will have um, three degrees of freedom. Okay, doing this, any phone that has a camera can do AR. But also, if you are in iOS with a compatible R-Kit device, you can have six degrees of freedom. That is, that, that's based on software for now, not on hardware. It's using software to recognize the floor. If you have an iPhone, you can try it with iOS 11 or 12. Uh, it recognizing the borders, and then you can walk around um, augmented reality environment. And the same on Android with r -Kit. It's not available on every Android device. You need to check it your phone or tablet is compatible with Arcor. Arcor is an app in the Play Store that you need to install and if it's not there, it's because it's not compatible with your phone or device. So in probably three, four years, 100% of the Android devices in the market will be compatible with, with Arcor. And with Arcor, again on Android, you can have six uh, degrees of freedom for AR with any phone. So the user can walk around an uh, AR environment. And then we have a stereoscopic augmented reality devices. In this case, we are talking about devices or headsets that you can use for AR. For example, the HoloLens. Okay, the HoloLens has six degree of freedom as well. It's not using software; it's using hardware for detecting the space. It's much faster than by software. By software, you need to like analyze the environment. I'm not sure if you have tried this before, but you need to take your phone and <coughs> move around with the camera so the phone can detect with the camera and also with accelerometer and other sensors where the space is actually uh, uh, happening in your room. Now we have Magic Leap as well that looks kind of weird. Um, that it's similar to, I have videos on this so you will see this in action in a minute. But these are stereoscopic, we mean you have two screens, one per eye, so that can emulate 3D. So you can see 3D and volume. When you don't have those headsets, all the other options are just 2D. Okay, 2D information in a 3D environment, but you don't actually see the 3D and then have glasses, 3D glasses. But no one is going to put 3D, like the cinema sees the 3D glasses follow behind your phone. So uh, even there is a new class known now, known as IRL. Have you ever heard about that one? IRL, in real life. What is this? This is a glass that basically deletes all the screens. So you can walk around in the real life. Okay, this is a real product, by the way. It's canon, so you, it, you cannot see the screens if you put those glasses. So we are going the other way around. Okay, so it's like no virtual, no virtual content anyway. Okay, just, just Google that, IRL, okay, um, and there, there are real videos that uh, you can see how it, how it works. The technology that is basically turning off all the screens around you, okay, so it's like no, no electricity around you. Anyway, so let's see the experience in action, okay. First, location based, this is the simplest one. So I took this picture in Moscow, okay, several years ago. Um, this is the basic thing that was available for, for a while now, probably around, I probably can say 10 years, okay? So I remember before, even this, it's an Android, <coughs> yeah, it's an Android, uh, I remember some uh, augmented reality app for, for Symbian, for Nokia, you remember Nokia? So, um, and this is basically taking the GPS to show me that information, and magnetometer. So the compass, but it's not doing any actual recognition of, of, the, of, of the building, really. It's just using geolocation. So if you fake the geolocation, it will tell you other things, not what you're actually seeing. Okay, so that's the basic one. This is, for example, this is uh, Tali, Tonya, with the glass. Okay, so this is how the glass, the Google Glass experience looks like from a user point of view. It's a very small screen, transparent screen that you see like here, I'm seeing like that here. It's a small one, it's really small. It's around, it's equivalent to a TV of 23 inches at uh, three meters away. So that's basically the, the experience that you see with the glass. 
Um, in this case, I was there, and there were five attractions nearby, and then I can see where my hotel was, and I can start navigation, and on the glass, you can see uh, your current, uh, the map, okay? But again, it's not really augmenting, uh, augmenting the, it's not that, you, you don't see it like uh, an arrow here over the road. It's just a 2D uh, car floating there. Okay, that's the glass, the Google Glass experience. This is La Forge, okay? I think it's a video. It's a, yeah. So that's a, uh, that's new, okay? I think they have an alpha and a beta version working right now. So you can see it's a full transparent view where you can see uh, information around you. Again, it's not really augmenting the street. You don't see something over the street, okay? It's just a layer of information on top of your reality, okay? You can Google, uh, if you want later, La Forge Optical, um, and you will see the, I think you can buy one. It's still beta, it's not like ready for uh, the masses yet, but it, it's there, it's coming. Here I have another video of the same product. Okay, so um, basically all that information is coming from your phone. Okay, you need the phone, so it's just a view of your phone. When you're driving, it looks uh, really nice. Okay. So I think the classes will still be there in a couple of years, probably two, three years. They will still be a thing, okay? So they didn't disappear because of the Google Glass. Um, now some examples of recognition-based software. For example, um, recognition of objects. In this case, it's a business card, and you go to a website, and it's recognizing the business card because of the QR code there, and you have like augmented information, for example, links to LinkedIn, to your profile, or to your profile. So this, you need to print or show some codes in physical object, and then with the right website or the right app, we will talk about that later, you point to that code and over your phone or over your glass, uh, some more information will appear, okay? I, 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 I was in, in Ukraine uh, yesterday, so I arrived yesterday here. Um, this is, um, I was in Dnipro uh, in Ukraine. That's a supermarket. They have a lot of oils. The problem is that it's in Ukrainian. Okay? So I have a problem. I don't read Ukrainian. So if I want to buy one, I can use an app, okay, that will use augmented reality to translate on the fly directly on top of the image. Okay, that's Google Translate. So it's not a big deal. To Ukrainian, to English, okay, it's doing that on the fly. But you need to download an app to that, okay? So uh, that's <coughs> another recognition-based AR. It's recognizing objects. It can be text, it can be barcodes. It can also be faces, okay? A Snapchat or Facebook, all these uh, effects on top of your face, it's also recognition-based AR. It's not really creating uh, an, an, an environment, a virtual environment on your real room. It's just recognizing your face and putting something on top of that. In this case, recognizing the text and replacing the text with a different one. <laughs> and finally, the most, um, the nice one is projection-based. Okay, so this is some videos that I uh, recorded from my HoloLens. Okay, so I was in a hotel for a conference, I think. Uh, so you can see I have 3D objects around my room, and I can walk, okay, I can move, I can see the objects around, the objects stay in their places. So if I have an object here, it's still there. So, um, because the device is recognizing the room. Okay, so uh, that's, that's the whole idea. So everything is, uh, is, is there. Then another example, for example, in terms of Windows, so the HoloLens is using Windows 10, so you can actually uh, open Windows. I think I was, that was a stage of the conference. I have the control panel there, okay, so it's a window. You can see it's a window. I can close the window. That was Morocco. So that's the star menu of the HoloLens. You can open new windows. The windows are just floating there, like 2D panels or frames floating around the, the room. 
And you can, in this case, take uh, holograms, like 3D holograms, and put them on the floor, in the table, or anywhere. There are games that are recognizing. Do, uh, do you remember Lemmings? Do you remember the game Lemmings? Well, there is a version of Lemmings for the HoloLens, <laughs> where the Lemmings are walking around your actual plate, so your chair. So they need to jump to your chair, or they, you need to create a stair so they can go to your chair. So it detects first your own environment, and then you can apply, um, and, and the game like uh, creates uh, the level of that game based on your room. Okay? So that's an that's, uh, ex example of the HoloLens. This is how the web looks like today in the HoloLens. So that Edge, the browser, or HoloLens, you can see uh, the website is hanging up there. So it's like uh, anything in, in this case in the stop for some reason. Let's go back. Hello. There we are. So um, you can have as many windows as you want. Like I think in this case I have several windows around the room. You can have Netflix in one room if you want. Like there, that's Netflix. Okay, so you can have a lot of things around. That's the that today is the most advanced AR that you can experience. You need for that uh, the HoloLens or the headset over your head. Okay, so that's the the whole uh, experience for now. So uh, this is. Uh, in this, this is the other competitor <coughs> of the HoloLens. So you can see, you can also see movies. It's just the browser, so you can browse any content. I will mention later that if you have a website <coughs> or, or a web app, you can enhance that website with immersive content, not just 2D content hanging around the room. Okay? So uh, you can make the screen bigger, smaller, Okay, virtual. So even if it, it appears in your um, in your room, it's totally virtual. So uh, now going back to your phone, to experiences that you can use without an actual device, which are the phone. This is an app for a restaurant, so you can actually see the food before ordering on your table. Okay, so you can in three D, so you can like get into the food to see like. Uh, to see it from different angles. Okay, so that's something that you can try yourself if you want uh, today. Okay, so there are uh, available to do that. So with a phone, this is not with a headset. Okay, we have a phone. Another example is you can see portals to different universes. So you can get in a different universe. Okay, not just see the universe, you can actually get in. You can walk to the universe. Okay, and now you are in the VR environment, but you can see that the real world is still there. That's using your camera okay, to get the information of the real world. Remember, in this case, uh, the video is like this. So you are doing this. Okay? You are seeing here the, the screen recording. Okay? You can go back to the real world. But it can be also a headset. It can be a glass. So something that you can do today. Another example of an immersive projection mental uh, reality, uh, you look for a Starbucks or anything on the map, and then you start an augmented reality experience. And here you can see that the actual arrow is over the street. Okay, that's why it's projection based, compared with Google Glass. It is not really augmenting your street, okay, saying where <laughs> where you need to go. So this is basically detecting the environment. It's also using the GPS as well and, the, and all the sensors on your phone, but it's giving you like a, a better screen. We can, if you want, we can forward a little bit. So you need to, it shows you directly where that Starbucks is. Okay, like that. So you can actually do this today. Okay, so um, and the last example I have for you before talking about okay how we can do this is the New York Times. So the New York Times has uh, a lot of augmented reality experiences today. 
where you're reading an article, and that article has uh, AER uh, uh, content inside. Okay, so they have a lot of examples right now. Of course, they wanna they wanna have one of these contents uh, per edition. It's not easy, but they need to create that content first. So um, in this case, you can see in this case people around you. Okay, this and in your place. So you can see, for example, think about football. You can actually see a goal. So I can pull the field here and see an actual goal. Okay, how it was. It's directly in AR with my phone. The problem with all these solutions is that today you need to install a lot of apps. Most of these experiences are basically inside a native application. So you need to go to a store and download an app. Those apps are typically 500 megabytes at least. So um, it's a problem because sometimes you want to see a content <coughs> for five minutes, and, and, and maybe one minute, and then you need to delete the app. So it doesn't make any sense <coughs> to install a lot of apps just for using them a couple of minutes. So that's why I think that the web and progressive web apps, the platform, will be a solution for this. You have the web, you go to a website or a URL, you see the content, you get out of that, and that's all. Okay? So, uh, both for VR and AR, that's why uh, Facebook has created a browser for their VR headset. Because they think that the, the, con the VR content will be more important on the web than on native apps. Okay, because it's temporary usage. You want to access the content, you want to consume the content, and that's all. Okay, you don't need to install anything. So, how can we develop for AR with the web today? So, if you want to start <coughs> doing AR for the web. So, uh, first, for geolocation and recognition AR, so the simpler version of AR, <coughs> we um, have a lot of solutions. First, using the camera as a platform, Okay, for example, what, what you see on Snapchat, okay, or information like that, use the camera and it gives you information about what you're actually seeing, not because it recognizes the object or the 3D environment or the room, it's because it's using geolocation or other APIs to do that. So, uh, for doing this, you have a couple of um, APIs available, WebRTC, uh, Accelerated Chain Detection API, and I will, I will get into that in a minute, and, and Web AR or Web XR that I will also explain. To get the camera with JavaScript, uh, it's simple. It's get user media. Okay, this is, a, this is an API that has been there for a while now. So um, it's, called, it's, it's based, based on WebRTC, and you can see it's available in all the browsers. So you can actually take the raw information from the camera on every browser and then render that content on the page. And if you want, lay over more content uh, over that uh, camera stream. So you can do that on any phone, on any <coughs> desktop computer. So that's available everywhere. But now, I'm not sure if you know this, there, are, there is a native API, for example, for face detection. Okay? So this is the code, roughly. You create a new face detector, it's using promises, you detect, and it's giving you faces. So if i using this API on my website, I can point with my camera to you, and it will give me information about each face that was recognized, with information about bounding box, so coordinates for the face, and landmarks. Where is a landmark in a face? Like many of you have airports in the face. Right? It's like the eyes, the nose, the mouth. So it gives you uh, coordinates of every point that was recognized. So you can, for example, add something on top, okay, like a fake nose or something like that. So it will give you that information in JavaScript, and then you can do whatever you want. That's the face detector API. You also there is also a shape detection API where you can, for example, detect a text, uh, like for OCR, and it, it, so it's basically an OCR, so object recognition system. On the, in the browser. So you on the fly, using the camera, you can point there and it will give you the text 
that was recognized. And this is how we're accelerating. So it's not software-based, it's hardware-based. And finally, there is a barcode detector available in Java. This API is currently available in Chrome 17 under something known as a trial, origin trial. Have you heard about that? Origin trial. So meaning that if you want to use it in, and try it with your own phone and Chrome, you need to enable a flag, an experimental flag. But from Chrome 70, you can ask for an origin trial, which means you want to use that API with your user, without your user enabling any flag. So you're asking Chrome, can I try this? And you will give, you need to fill a form with your the URL, your origin, the, your domain, and Google will give you a, a like code that you need to insert in your, in your web, in your web page, and then you can try your this API with your users on Chrome 70. Okay? So it's currently kind of available. And probably next year, uh, it will be available for others. <coughs> and you can do things like Snapchat filters on the fly on a website. Okay, or on a PWS. <coughs> Most of the time, you're not going to do this uh, recognition your own, on your own, like detecting the, the pixels and trying to detect a barcode or something like that. That library doesn't really help you with that. ARJS and XR Plus are the two open source libraries available that will let you create this kind of experience, for example, with the barcode, the one with the business card. With ARJS, you can do that. Okay, pretty easy. So we're about projection based AI. So the more the, the, the complex one, the one that is creating um, objects around, detecting the, the area, like for example the restaurant app. So uh, today we have an um, spec known as WebXR. Here we have the XR word. Okay, so WebXR is, is based on WebVR. So it was originally it was VR only. <clears throat> but then they say VR and AR, they look similar. We are. We have an environment with 3D coordinates and objects in that environment. So it's a similar API. So uh, that's why they they merged Web VR and AR into something known as Web XR. So um, it has a spatial search, so it detects your your actual space. So you can. So if you put something here. It looks on one size, but if I put it there, it looks smaller because it's far away. So it detects that, and it allows immersive and non-immersive experiences. So this is a non-immersive experience, and if I put a headset, that's an immersive experience. So it supports AR for both options, for, for magic windows and also for headsets like the HoloLens. Um, there is a simpler API on top of WebXR that is known as Heat Test API. That's the one that will let you place objects there in the floor. It's pretty simple to use. So the API and the hardware and the operating system is doing all the magic. You just say, I want to put this 3D object that I have here, I want to put it here in the floor. And it will appear in the floor. And you can say how far from the user you want that option. And it will work. Okay. So that's the API. And for this API, you don't need permission from the user. You need permission for the camera no, to open the camera. But once the user uh, granted you permission for the camera, then you can put 3D objects on, on that camera without actually an app. We're talking about the web. Okay? So a website. We're talking about the web. So uh, an example of a spatial search on the web. So you can see detecting the, the, the the floor, and you can put furniture and see how it looks like on the web without actually installing any app. Okay, IKEA, Amazon uh, have apps like that, but in this case, we're talking about the web. So we, the user doesn't need to install any app; just go to your website. <laughs> Another example of WebXR proposal. So you can see it says "aim at the floor," and when you detected the floor, then you can place objects. You can make them bigger, okay? That's a real example on an Android that you can try on your own Android, okay, WebXR. Okay, so you can see it's a browser, and then you have content there, okay? So today, it's that, this API, it's available in Chrome on Android, 
if you have R-Core, so you need a phone compatible with augmented reality, and you need to enable the flash. So it's a still experimental. Okay, unfortunately. So it's not yet available for all the users. It will be next year. Okay, so it's still experimental. Also, Firefox created for iOS, so if you have an iPhone, uh, WebXR Viewer. It's on the App Store, it's free. It's a browser and to try and test WebXR content. So it will make uh, everything available on iPhone. Also, Google created WebAR on AR Kit and WebAR on AR Core. Yeah, those are the names of the apps. Available uh, for, for experiment with uh, WebXR, with this API uh, on, on this uh, solution. Then Firefox, I'm not sure if you have heard about this. On Android, has a new browser known as Firefox Reality. You can Google that or you can uh, search that on the Play Store, Firefox Reality. It's a new browser for VR and AR, and it's supporting WebXR. That, by the way, WebXR is a bit experimental, which means it will change. I mean, if you write code now, maybe in five months you need to change that code, because they're changing names, they're changing functions, they're changing procedures, so it's still in your stage. And if you have Edge on the HoloLens, you can also make WebXR work today. Still experimental, okay, but it works. And there are libraries because WebXR is only for detection. WebXR will help you on detecting <coughs> devices like headset, also on detecting edges, but it's not actually rendering content. To render content, you need to use a canvas, typically WebGL, 3D content. Okay? So um, most of the time, you don't want to do that yourself. There are libraries to, to work with that. The most important one is 3 js and A-Frame XR. Both are XR compatible, so you can actually, if you have a 3D object in any format, uh, then you can put that object into space and it will work with two lines of, of code. So you don't need to actually uh, write the 3D code to do that. Most of the examples that you saw before are using this open source library. Finally, for iPhone, from iOS 12, there is also a new solution available for AR on the web. And it's called USDC, Universal Scene Description. And the C is because it's a zip file. So uh, it was created by Apple and Pixar. It's an open source format. So it might be available on Android at one point in the future because it's open. And it will let you place 3D objects with augmented reality. Okay? Without actually writing any code, you just need a file. That file is the USDC file. And then I will show you the HTML code to point to that file. And Safari, the browser, <coughs> will uh, turn on a feature known as AR Quick Look that will place that object here in Asia. Without actually me developing anything in Java. Okay, it will just work. So, um, it supports real-world lighting, so basically the phone, iOS, it's a tech with uh, ARKit 2 from iOS 12. It's detecting the light, where the light is coming from, and it's adding reflection to the object like if it were here. It also has a metallic reflection, and it supports static content and also animations. Okay, so you can have an animation happening here right now from a website. So the New York Times animation that you saw it's possible now from the website. The, the New York Times sample that you saw was an app. So if you need you need to use the actual native app from the New York Times. But then you're on Twitter, you click on a link, you want to see the article, it has AR content, you want to see it there. I don't want to go to the app, search for the article again. It doesn't make any sense. So now from the web, you can do this. This is how it works, it's pretty simple. You just have an AMG, that it's an image, and you wrap that IMG with a link with the rel AR. Okay? That's that's important part. The link will point to the USDC file. And we can try to see if in action, um, basically what you're going to see is an image with an AR icon. If the user clicks on the AR icon, it will jump into an AR viewer that will show that um, model or animation or 3D content in your real flow or table. OK? 
Okay, so that's available today since iOS 12. Um, also, you can detect if it's available or not, very simply in the chat grid. So to show alternative content or something like that if it's not available. And there, are, um, there is a, a tool for developers inside Xcode to convert and create these files. But there is a very simple online tool in a directory that will let you uh, take any 3D uh, element that you have, any 3D content that you have, even a 3D content that you created with your phone, um, and convert it into USDC. So you can put it in AR. Basically, you need to take the, the, the object, define metadata, such as, for example, the real size of the object. How is the size of this bottle in the real world? Because when we put this in AR, I want it to be on the real size. I don't want it to be really small or really big. So you need to specify that metadata. When you have a 3D model, you specify information to put that model in the real world, such as size. Okay? Um, if you want to try this, if you have an iPhone with iOS 10 or an iPad with iOS, iOS 12, sorry, um, there is a quick look gallery. Also, that uh, Shop Magnolia, they have a lot of uh, AR kit uh, models that you can actually see. And Fusionart.app, that's a URL, uh, .app is a new domain, by the way. Um, it has also a gallery of open source uh, AR models that you can try on your iPhone. Okay? So, what about the future? So, the only thing that I can tell you is that it's unknown. The future is unknown. Okay? So, uh, we don't know what, <coughs> what will happen. And if you think about that, 23 years ago, that was the phone, basically. Okay? 19 years ago, we didn't have uh, digital information in the phone. Okay. 15 years ago, we didn't have games. By the way, that's a game I have created. It's in Spanish. It's called Truco. It's a, it's a card game. Uh, I, I created that in 2003 in Java. But 15 years ago, that wasn't available. And we didn't have the idea that we were games in your pocket. Why? How are you going to have games in your phone? That doesn't make any sense. 14 years ago, we didn't have phones with, uh, with camera, that's a camera. And at that time, 14 years ago, we weren't thinking, oh yeah, in five years, everyone will have a camera in, in their pockets. But camera in the pocket doesn't make any sense. At that time, it wasn't making any sense. <coughs> or GPS. That was my first uh, mobile phone with a GPS, Nokia N95. And at the time, it was a GPS in the phone? Why do we want a GPS? Really, 12 years ago, no one was thinking that that was useful. Okay? So that's why I'm saying if you look at the future, I know because at that time, we didn't realize that the GPS uh, will be something really important today. So uh, 11 years ago, we didn't have the iPhone, not because of the iPhone, but because of Now, basically, every phone, if you look at the phone, um, looks like an iPhone. So that's an Android, but it's an iPhone. It's just, um, multi-touch screen. That's all you have there. Um, we didn't have that. In fact, I remember when the iPhone appeared, I was doing mobile apps before the iPhone. A lot of um, analysts in the market were saying, that's not going to work. No, key, no keys, no actually physical keys, that's not going to work. It will be a fake. I remember that. <coughs> okay. Well, the thing happened then with, with the iPad, and now it's happening. it happened a year ago with the notch. Notch of the iPhone 10. They were saying, oh, no, what is that? That's awful. And now every Android phone and new phone has a notch. Okay? So what will happen in five years? What will happen in ten years? The notch. The notch is... Let me show you. That thing there. That the screen is going over the, the screen, but it has that gray air for the camera. So, uh, and now every, every new Android device that is appearing uh, this year has a notch. And a year ago, we were saying, oh, that's awful. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's, it's impossible to talk about the future, okay, because uh, no one knows. But in terms of the web, the web is trying to get into these new realities, how to browse the web. So if you are reading an article 
on a newspaper? How to render that article in PI? How to render that article in AI? So we are still playing with that. In fact, what is a pixel anymore? So if you have something in your website that uh, it's 100 pixels, what does it mean when I can actually walk to that 100, it is 100 pixels? So what, what pixel means here? Because I can walk in or out of the element. So we need to like recreate the whole web to enter this new world. So we need to uh, redefine bitmaps. For example, in this case, um, that, that was a hotel, the hotel hall. I can walk okay, to the, the web page. So what about bitmaps that you have there? Are you going to load a big bitmap? Even if you're, you're seeing that page like there, we're loading a big bitmap. Maybe we need to rethink that. And there are ideas. Uh, responsive images based on the distance of the user. Okay, um, that's called neat maps, and there is a format, a new image format that is it's an experiment for now, known as FLIF, and that FLIF format is uh, the same file. Okay, um, it's giving you first the first x bytes of the image. It's a very low resolution version. Then, if you continue downloading more bytes you increase the resolution. More, more resolution. So it's a format that instead of having three, four, five, ten versions of the image, you have only one. But the browser knows the metadata and how it works, how that format works, and the browser will download only the bytes that it feels it's needed at that time. Uh, for example, if you start walking to walking towards the, the website, the browser can start downloading more bytes to increase the resolution of that image. Okay, so new ideas that will change how we look at this, like CSS media queries, okay, like that. Because we can change how we are designing websites based on the distance of the user. Okay, even if we can use actual uh, meters, or feet, or whatever. Uh, infinite viewports, that is, what is a viewport? What is the window size? For example, on the HoloLens, going back to the HoloLens, you can take the window, the actual window, and make it uh, taller. You can actually use any, any shape, any size. I'm not sure why the video is stopping. So it can be of any size, any shape. Okay, you don't want to play. You can make it smaller, large. So it's not really a window anymore. It can be anything. Okay, so we need to rethink what we are doing when we are creating content when the content is going to be consumed in AI. So there are a lot of new challenges for what is currently known as the immersive web. In fact, in W3C, the organization that creates the standard for the web, there is a working group known as the Immersive Web Content Group. Those are the ones that are creating the, the specs and the APIs to create the web for this new reality, for VR and for AI. Okay, what about Apple Glass? There are rumors, in fact, there are a couple of patents that are public saying that Apple might be releasing a class <coughs> in 2020. If you ask me, I think that's totally possible because I don't think that AR kit and all the stuff that you have right now with your phone, with the magic window, it's, uh, it's for the magic window. Because uh, if you want to play a game, I'm not sure if you have seen some of the latest Apple keynotes, they are showing games with AI. So, if, for example, we can all play, uh, we have iPads or iPhones, and we can play a war game uh, over the table. So we can like, do this. But I'm not sure how, for how long do you want to keep your phone like this. I think that this is actually preparing content and games and solutions for a class, for a headset, for something. I don't think that uh, this is the final, the final idea of Apple and, and AI. <coughs> anyway, I think it's, we are talking about the exciting time for the web because the web is moving towards these uh, new realities. <coughs> and I think it's, the web will, will basically win uh, the content. Maybe some uh, intensive VR or AR game will still be native. But for content, like temporary content, museums, where you go to, if you enter a museum and you want to see AR content around, you don't want to start an app, oh, I need to wait for the app to start. You're in a different city, you're roaming. Uh, 
<coughs> so it's complicated. And uh, with the web, you have the web. You go to the website. With progressive web app, the website can work offline, can install some things, you can install if you want. So it's just the web. So with the advantages of the web, and we have now AR support for that. Okay? And that was all I have for the presentation. Any question? I hope you have questions. Yeah. A uh, few years ago, I was playing with the API by one German company called Metallic. Uh -huh. They used to have uh, also a browser called Junaya. And then you passed it from Apple Book and then it's gone. So. Yeah, that's so that's the, the only thing that you know in this, in this field. The only thing that you can you can be sure of is that everything is going to change. So, usually my suggestion for the web in general and for the mobile space in general is don't try to be too fanatic of, uh, of any technology or so think about the ideas. Then don't be fanatic of names, technologies, frameworks, languages because they change. I've seen that so many times. I've seen I have friends or people I know that they were fans of ActionScript on Flash. And then they want to kill themselves when Apple basically killed, well, maybe not Apple, uh, let's say Adobe, when Adobe plus Apple uh, killed Flash. <coughs> and the same happened with Glass. I knew a lot of people that, that like me that were using Glass, but they were like Glass fans. They created uh, companies with the Glass name uh, in their company name. Like, we're doing Glass apps because Glass is the future. It wasn't the future. So, uh, but it, I, I was receiving all the emails from Google about Glass, and Glass was the future of Google. So Google is going to be Glass only. So if you if you believe on them, uh, one day they said they disappear. Completely. Yeah, I, know. I was playing with this also. Mm -hmm. good names for this time. They disappear yeah. again. But the idea, the uh, the web and, and IT in general, when when the idea is uh, it's okay. Sometimes the timing is not the right one. Sometimes they are. Uh, let's say business decisions that make things weird. Uh, I think they, they did a lot of mistakes with the, with the glass at the time. Uh, but the idea is coming back. But I didn't see that, that Apple did anything in that direction. At that time. But now, since that both, a, but ART, it was a huge company, it was not just... But ART, it was not ART is like that. My point of view, okay. ART is basically that. I don't think ART is Again, for the phone. For how long are you going to hold your phone like this for a game that it's one hour? That's amazing. You need something, a glass, a headset, I don't know. Um, and basically, Apple acquired a couple of companies that were doing things like that. So there are a lot of rumors saying that 2020 is going to be the year for Apple releasing a device. I don't know, but I think it's. Uh, it's possible. Any other questions? I'm not sure if it's, there are no questions or if they are hungry. I don't know what. Too <laughs> bit, but they will be waiting for the pizza. So you need you need to ask questions now. <laughs> no question. I, I believe we, we need to hear more. Uh, I believe you didn't say everything, so maybe you more. we like uh, hearing what you say from what topic. I, I can talk for hours. <laughs> <laughs> I have a flight we tomorrow. Like, I think my flight is tomorrow at three p.m. I can speak at just one, <laughs> and that's fine. I can just more. Maybe one hour before the okay, so yeah, uh, then 2 p.m. of <laughs> 1.40. But um, what, what, what are you excited, excited about in this whole story? In the AR, AR yeah. say? So uh, I think because uh, the Apple, the Apple USDC format uh, has just been released with iOS 12. So it has just a couple of weeks only. So um, a lot of companies are right now, as we speak, creating the content. So now you want to start browsing eBay or Amazon 
and you will be able to have an icon for AI, and you will be able to actually, uh, in the website, get that option and see how it looks like uh, directly in VR. Or sports. For sports, well, I know companies working with, in that case, they're still not working with, uh, maybe for Qatar 2022, for the next World Cup. I can see for the next World Cup VR and AR for watching the games. Not now for that, we need, still need, they need a lot of cameras to capture the, uh, the video in all the angles. So that's why, and I think in Qatar they're going to do that. Uh, so today we're going to see an animation of gold, for example, and you will be able to see the match. There are examples, we can, uh, I can show you some examples on ESPN, working with VR and AR. So you can actually see in this case what the baseball game uh, actually in floor. So you see the players playing in floor. So you can see an actual uh, play, an actual uh, goal, and see how it looked like from different angles. So you can see the, where, where each uh, uh, player was positioned at that time directly in your floor or in your table. So what we still need is, is content because the chicken or the egg, the users, the users are not using this because there are no content, and there are no content because no one knows about AR yet. So uh, the only one that can break that problem is the uh, content makers. Uh, but now because we have more uh, more and more uh, users using this, I think it's going to just start growing. Let me see if I can show you uh, USDC in action. Let's see if, uh, what's the Wi-Fi here? Yeah? Okay, let's try it. So I'm going to use now Pete is coming, so no one's going to hear me anymore. But um, I will try to mirror my iPhone. Let's see, there we are. So if I open Safari, okay, let's see. So that's my iPhone. So you can see there is a guitar there. So that icon is the AR icon. Okay, I can click on that icon. It's downloading the USDC file now. The streaming. This is streaming my screen directly there. So I see the guitar there. It's kind of a slow, but anyway, you can actually see it. But that guitar is in, it's not really in AR yet. I can click on the AR icon at the top. And now it will try to put that guitar here in the room <laughs> with the actual size. Now it's into the tech uh, room, so I need to do this. There we are. So uh, that's the guitar, okay? In real size, here in the room. It's, I think the, the iPhone doesn't have enough power to stream and do like a nice, but you can actually see this. The, the, the guitar is there. Can you play guitar? <laughs> Not yet, but uh, no, there is no I can also I can also see it from the other side. Okay, so it knows where the guitar is. I feel like I can replace it. I can also rotate it with my fingers. Okay, okay, and it's there. You can see the actual size of that guitar, and that's from the web. So that wasn't the native app. Okay, that's the web. That's the web. Um, Okay. <laughs> you can see this is uh, yeah, a lot of uh, elements that you can play with, and I think I, I also have here some other examples with animations. I didn't try this one, so I don't know. Let's see. Come on. The stream is kind of slow. <laughs> <laughs> so I can put these little guys here somewhere. There we go. And that's an animation. They are in the floor, so I can actually do things like this. So I can move, I can get closer, I can see them from all the angles. Okay, so that's AR, and that's a web, okay? And so, this is how you do that, how to do that on iOS. On Android, this format is not supported yet, but you can use WebXR, the API, the JavaScript API, the one I mentioned, to do the same. Okay, uh, and, and again, I think that that with the glass will be even better than working with with this. Okay? If you have an iPhone, you can try it yourself. You need iOS 12. And it should be, I think it should be the um, 
iPhone 6 at least. So if you have a 5, I think it's not working on the 5. It doesn't have enough power to all, do all the calculations. But it looks good on the phone. No, it looks, no, try it there. It, it looks slow there. That's the streaming there. It, it, looks, it looks fine and normal here. Yeah. The, the streaming is not working fine. But I think the. Also the bathroom. But. Uh, it doesn't have enough power to send 60 frames per second over Wi-Fi and also make all the calculations, so basically it's losing frames, but if you look on the actual iPhone, if you want to try it later, uh, you can do it. Okay? Any other questions? Uh, yeah, just, just to the last one, I mean, uh, when it, this is just completely opinion-based, so mm -hmm. do you think for, for the AR to get uh, like a wireless and use it, do you think it has to be some of the big dogs who implemented it, like Apple or Google, or it can be a startup? Uh, the thing is, what do you mean by implementing? Uh, because in terms of implementation, Apple already did that, the USDC format, in terms of Google is working on the WebXR, uh, we need content. Okay, when Amazon is creating content, eBay is creating content, newspapers are creating content, and those are the big players. So, uh, those will give you uh, the, the technology to the mainstream. Yeah. So, users will try that and say, oh, that's cool, so I want that to my production also. So, uh, again, we are still in early stages of this, it's just starting. I think next year we will see a lot of growth in, in, in AR. Uh, because now we have capable phones, we don't need headsets, uh, we have capable phones to render AR, so that will we'll grow a lot. Okay. Uh, what, what's your opinion on, on uh, uh, glasses, glass or headsets will, will prevail? Or, or, uh, they are for different use cases. So they are for different use cases. Because uh, uh, the headset is for indoors. Um, probably it can be for gaming or, or let's say, business. And for example, I, I, I can actually see in the future that a developer called Coding, Coder, will not need a, a monitor anymore. So why do I need a monitor? I can just play the headset, I have a keyboard, a physical keyboard, um, the headset, and then I can create as many screens as I want around me, with emulators, with responsive design around me, and I can just have as uh, big as, as I want with the headset and the screen. I can just code and see how it looks like, what testing on one side. I, I think that, that's totally possible. Um, but that's indoors. That's not to go outside. The glass is for actually walking on the street. But for different different kind of AR. So you, know, you don't want to code there. So it's like a, for different purposes. I think, uh, I think there, are, there are space for both. So you, you think uh, Apple is, is going to release a uh, headset as well? I think uh, Apple is targeting uh, end user basically. So uh, if I need to bet, I will bet in something for the end user, not for the developer or designer or architect, or not for the business, mm -hmm. because uh, there are more money in the end user. But I don't know, maybe both. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I get that they will try to achieve the end user. Like the, the user base is all to have something that can use uh, the daily base. A new device to charge, basically. Okay? Pizza then? Thanks. Yes? Okay? Cool. Thanks.